How to fix dehydrated skin? I feel like this video is important because myself, I didn't realize I had dehydrated skin. You can see from this picture how dehydrated my skin looks. My fine lines and wrinkles are very prominent. My makeup is just caked in there. I remember looking at this picture and thinking, wow, I look older than I feel like I should look. And it was sort of a turning point in my skincare game. I really started focusing on hydrating my skin and making hydration a key feature in my skincare routine. Now I have combination skin that's sensitive prone and rosacea prone. So if this is something you can relate to, happy to have you here. But first, this video has a sponsor and that sponsor is Naked and Thriving. I really wanna thank them for this collaboration because I have really enjoyed testing out their products. Naked and Thriving is an organic, cruelty-free, sustainable skincare brand. And I just love that they partner with nonprofits to plant a tree for every bottle that they sell. They sent me these gorgeous products to try. And I just love these glass and ceramic bottles. They're such a beautiful aesthetic, looks great on the vanity. Even my husband commented on how pretty they look. That says a lot. I have here two serums, two face oils, and an eye cream. This one is the Illuminate Face Serum. It's a vitamin C serum that's meant to protect and leverage the antioxidant benefits of vitamin C to really help brighten your skin tone and protect against environmental stressors. The Protect Serum is actually an antioxidant serum that has an impressive array of ingredients. There's green tea, shiitake mushroom, hyaluronic acid, aloe. The Protect Serum has a gel-like texture that's easily absorbed into the skin. I love using an eye cream in my skincare routines to really give that hydration that you can see from my original picture, my skin needs. This one has natural peptides in to help plump and hydrate the delicate skin around your eyes. It also contains ceramides and bakuchiol, which is a natural, less irritating alternative to retinol. And finally, these two gorgeous face oils. Not only are they pretty to look at, they're beautiful to use on your skin. I have really enjoyed adding face oils into my skincare routine because I love the benefits they give for my dehydrated skin. Rejuvenate face oil, which is the orange one, is really meant to target the look of your fine lines and wrinkles and deliver nice hydration into the skin. I love to use this in my evening routine as my very last step. But finally, is my favorite of the bunch. If I had to pick a favorite, I know you're not allowed to say that when you have children, and maybe it's wrong to say it around skincare too, but this one's my favorite. This is the Prevent Anti-Aging Face Oil. Besides the color yellow, which I just love, it contains antioxidants that help to protect the skin from those environmental stressors and pollution without clogging your pores, while also targeting the look of your fine lines and wrinkles. It has wonderful emollient ingredients like jojoba seed oil, sweet almond oil, rosehip oil, moringa oil, and carrot seed oil. My skin is absolutely loving this oil. It just feels so nourished and moisturized and protected as you can see here. All these products are linked down in the description and you can use my link to get a free Naked and Thriving Deluxe Mini with your purchase of any full size product. Thank you Naked and Thriving for sponsoring today's video. Now of course I think it's very important to understand what dehydrated skin is and isn't. I recently did a video explaining all the different skin types and I'll link that for you here because it's important to know what your skin type is and I also talk a bit about dehydrated skin in that video. Now dry skin is often confused with dehydrated skin dry skin has a lack of oil production in the skin, whereas dehydrated skin has a lack of water or moisture in the skin. So there's a big difference between the two, and in fact, you can have different skin types and also have dehydrated skin. That was my situation. I have combination skin, so I mistook the oil production in my skin for moisture and hydration which it is not. And of course, I'm 47 years old, so dehydration, I think, is a skin concern that can sort of crop up and be more prevalent as you age. I definitely feel that's been the contributing factor for me. In essence, my skin is more susceptible to TEWL or transepidermal water loss, which is the evaporation of the moisture out of my skin, which in the end leads to a really dull, lackluster looking skin, which I think can tend to look a little bit older than it needs to. And I've said it a thousand times in my TikToks, Instagram, here on YouTube, once I started focusing on hydration in my skincare routines, other things that I struggled with started to fall away as well. So for me, it's been a game changer. So I'm gonna walk you through some of my favorite products that I use in my skincare routines to tackle my dehydration. Starting with cleansing. Cleansing is very important. And I have combination skin. It makes actually putting together skincare routines and choosing skincare products 
quite difficult. I almost feel like oily skin people know what the best practices is for them. Dry skin people, they know what the best practices are for them. Combination skin people like me need something here that's different than what we need here. So my solution to that has been to approach the application of my serums and products in a targeted way. It can mean that I only apply certain products, especially like salicylic acid that really helps my oily T-zone. I only apply it to my T-zone. I don't put it on my cheeks because it's not necessary there. And that also applies to my cleanser. Now in the morning, you've probably heard me say, I tend to use water only to cleanse my face. That is, unless I've used a sleep on or leave on mask the night before that I really want to remove. If that's the case, I will turn to a light micellar water for a wash like this one from Garnier's, one of my faves, or this ocean cleansing milk that Osea sent me over to try that is really light, gentle, and hydrating. Perfect for a morning cleanse that doesn't strip or over cleanse my face. In the evening, I do a double cleanse and I prefer to use an oil cleansing balm as the first step in my double cleanse. And I recently did a video on my favorite cleansing balm, so I'll link that video for you here to watch. And then I follow it up with a water-based cleanser. Five to six days out of seven, I am using a hydrating cleanser for that step. The other two days, I may use a salicylic acid cleanser just on my T-zone. You may be thinking, how do you wash just your T-zone? I got it down to a science. Maybe I'll post a short video on it. I know many think, who cares what the cleanser is? It's on your face for a short amount of time. What does it matter what ingredients are in it? You're washing it away. But I disagree. Cleansing is one of the most important steps and it's one of the only essential steps in a skincare routine. It is essential to remove all the dirt, makeup, sunscreen, impurities, pollution that's on your face, especially at the end of the day. And the cleansers that I choose that have hydrating ingredients have the opportunity to get into my skin while they're working to remove all that surface level debris. So what I want is after cleansing to not feel like my skin is stripped. I want to highlight this cleanser from Allies of Skin. This is their Molecular Silk Amino Hydrating Cleanser. It's fabulous. It has wonderful hydrating ingredients like amino acids, vitamin C, organic sunflower oil, organic moringa oil, white tea, and it just gently cleanses the skin while depositing these fabulous ingredients. $40 US, but I do have a 20% off code in the description if you want to try. If you want a more affordable cleanser, this drugstore option is absolutely one of my favorites. This is Amino's Common Restore line, and this is their Nourishing Oak Cleanser. Here in Canada, this one's only 12 bucks. These cleansers both help to get some hydration into the skin, but the next steps in your skincare routine are essential to really pack in that hydration and then seal it all in so you're you're not susceptible to trans epidermal epidermal so you're not susceptible to trans epidermal water loss for me the next step in my skincare routine is a toner and I'm a big fan of the seven skin methods of hydration when it comes to a hydrating skincare K Beauty really does it best what the seven step method of hydration is is applying a hydrating toner in basically seven separate skins. So you apply a layer immediately after cleansing, you let it sink in, and then you apply another layer, let it sink in, and so on and so on. In the morning time, when I don't have a lot of time, I will do this two or three times. In the evening, when I have a more relaxing skincare routine, I will do it up to seven, and it is really astonishing how hydrated your skin will feel after this. Very important that you're using the right toner for this, full of nice hydrating ingredients, I like to get antioxidants in there when I can. One of my all-time favorite toners to do this method with is this one. It's Pyongyang Yule's Essence Toner. It just has very basic ingredients, hydrating ingredients that gets the job done. I would love to know from all of you, do you use any drugstore hydrating toners? Because all the toners in my skincare cupboard tend to be Korean skincare products. Next up, also might be obvious, we need some hydrating serums to tackle dehydrated skin. There's so many hydrating serums to choose from. And of course, hyaluronic acid as an ingredient probably comes to mind for those of you who really enjoy hyaluronic acid serums. Hyaluronic acid is a great humectant that really draws moisture into the skin under the right conditions and can often already be found in your cleansers, your toners, your moisturizers,
moisturizers, your sunscreen. So you may already be getting enough of it in the other products in your skincare routine, but if you don't feel that to be the case, this is a great point in the routine to add it in. I have to say my favorite time to use a hyaluronic acid serum is in the summer months where I live because it's so humid here. So the hyaluronic acid works really well to draw the moisture in from the air even into the deeper layers of your skin. This hyaluronic acid serum was given to me by Osea. Their skincare company based out of Miami or is it Malibu? It's Malibu. And it combines multi-molecular weights of hyaluronic acid combined with seaweed extracts. Beautiful formulation, but it's on the higher end of indulgence at $119 a serum. There are many less expensive hyaluronic acid serum choices out there, most notably from The Ordinary and The Inky List. However, many people do find that those particular products do tend to pill, especially under makeup and other skincare products. To be honest, for me, one of my favorite cost-effective effective hydrating serums that actually isn't hyaluronic acid so definitely if you're sensitive to hyaluronic acid and you want something different the ordinary's amino acids plus b5 is simply fabulous no one talks about this serum and honestly it's under ten dollars an absolute bargain however i cannot not mention however I can't not mention. I'm gonna mention Regimen Labs Wave Serum. I've done an entire review on this brand and I'll link that video here for you. It is such a good hydrating serum. It contains multi-molecular weights of hyaluronic acid and I've, I've used that expression now, I realize in the video and didn't really explain what that means. When you have different weights of hyaluronic acid, it helps the molecules get into the deeper layers of skin at different levels. In essence, delivering the benefits to various levels of your skin. This also uses 24 other humectants and marine plant hyaluronics in the formulation. When it comes to moisturizers, a lightweight, beautiful moisturizer that has ceramides in it and just the most beautiful texture is this one by Stratia. This is their liquid gold serum. My combination skin just loves this product. It isn't too thick, it isn't too thin, it's just the right consistency and it's $27 for a two ounce size. When it comes to thicker, creamier moisturizers, this one is often featured in my evening skincare routine. It's Drunk Elephant's Proteiny Polypeptide Moisturizer. The technology behind this moisturizer, if you're not familiar, it contains signal peptides, growth factors, amino acids, and ceramides. Definitely more an investment. This one's $89 for a 50 ml size. But my skin drinks up this formulation and just loves it. Finally, face oils. We talked about this off the top of the video, but I want to talk about how beneficial they are for dehydrated skin and my own ambition about why I didn't use them for many years. And the reason why was because someone had recommended for me to try a rosehip seed oil. So I bought one, opened it, used it a couple times, and then I went to use it again, not anywhere near the period after opening timeline for it to have gone off. And it smelled so bad. <laughs> It was awful and it just turned me off of face oils and I thought if this is what they do and you're expected to use them that quickly, that's ridiculous. I'm done with face oils. I was very close-minded at the time. But over the last year, I've been dabbling in face oils again and can I ever say I am a convert. I have noticed such a big difference in just the overall suppleness of my skin. And that's because face oils are really working to smooth and soften the outer layer of your skin. They also give a very thin protective seal that helps to lock in the moisture, helping to prevent that transepidermal water loss. But let me know in the comments if you'd like me to do a full video on just face oils. Finally, the very last thing to talk about when it comes to dehydrated skin are occlusive products. Face oils will give some occlusive properties to the skin, but the ultimate occlusives contain petrolatum. So think Vaseline, Aquaphor, and if you haven't heard of slugging yet, you can check out my videos on that method as well. But basically applying a very thin layer of an occlusive product like Vaseline to the skin, either all over your face or in the areas that need it most, seals the skin and all the hydrating ingredients you've just packed into your skincare routine and not allowing that transepidermal water loss to take place. You can even do it just in the areas that need it. That tends to be my approach. I do it around my eyes and my laugh lines and my forehead. I see really good results from it. Now someone has commented previously on my video 
Maybe it was in a community post that they actually got milia around the eyes by slugging around the eyes. So it's something to keep in mind that that is a possibility. If Vaseline or Aquaphor is not your thing, Drunk Elephant has just come out with their Wonder Wild Miracle Butter. I've been testing this out as part of my slugging routine and it works really well. It's $50 for a 60 ml size. I'm just realizing I forgot to talk about face masks. I think we'll leave that to another video. I hope this has given you some ideas to tackle your dehydrated skin. As always, comment below your thoughts and have a fabulous day.